Edinburgh, a city that celebrates and welcomes the world, not only during its many festivals, but throughout the year. With as many as 59 different languages spoken, Edinburgh is a vibrant melting pot of art forms, cultures and languages. Arts and Tongues goes on a journey to meet some of the diverse bilingual artists present on your doorstep. C'est parti! Artists, surgeons, songs, in language. Fun Yang! Did you know that Edinburgh Square is not in Edinburgh, but in Hong Kong? Or at least it was until 2006, as it was part of the old Star Ferry Pier in the city centre of Hong Kong before it got demolished. Now, it still stands nowadays as a big open space in the overbuilt city, freely accessible to people. A little bit like where we are today, in the meadows, in the heart of Edinburgh's old town. Not too far from here, the University of Edinburgh, there's also another eminent Hong Kong figure that stands there. The plaque and statue of Dr. Wan Fun was one of the first Chinese to graduate medical school at the University of Edinburgh in 1855. But let's ask our guest artist of the day, Cynthia Chun, about what Edinburgh and Hong Kong have in common. Lei ho, Cynthia. Lei ho. <laughs> so what are the similarities between the two cities? Um, I would say alpha seats. Uh, here is metal with alpha seats at the back. I chose here because um, it reminds me Lion Rock Hill in Hong Kong. Both of the rocks can identify the shape of lion heads and bodies. And uh, in Hong Kong, I live under the Lion Rock Hill. So sitting in here reminds me my life in Hong Kong. I am Zhang Weisan. I am a Hong Kong man. I have been in Edinburgh for two years. My mother tongue is Cantonese, but I also speak Chinese and English. When I was born in Hong Kong, I was born in the United States, so I have a culture of Chinese culture and also a culture of Chinese culture. I work in the United States, and I also have a culture of Chinese culture. I work as a freelance multidisciplinary art practitioner, stage manager, and also performance maker. I love art, craft, and performance. And my work focuses on multiculturalism, and I want to create a space for young people to experience the beauty of diversity and also celebrate the uniqueness of the cultural heritage. So how do you incorporate your linguistic and cultural heritage as part of your artistic practice? My cultural heritage is my creative base. Uh, my work focuses on multiculturalism and I believe everyone should protect, preserve and celebrate their own cultural heritage but also be positive and respect other cultures. So I would say without my cultural heritage to support me, I won't have enough confidence to deliver my work, particularly in multiculturalism topics. What does it mean for you to be a bilingual artist in Scotland right now? I'm an Asian and a new immigrant in the country that facing different challenges and difficulties in the community. And as a minority race in Scotland, I would say I have the responsibility to promote the multiculturalism to the community with my practice and to eliminate the racial discriminations and also create a safe and positive environment for everyone. So it gives me a sense of missions of it. I wanted to share the pictogram of Chinese character today with you. So here is the pictogram of the Chinese character. And uh, pictogram is one of the formative principles of the Chinese character. And the people think about the word related with the pictures of they present. So you can see in here, Sun, mountain, Yu, moon, yat, sun, mo, wood, four, fire, tin, farm, so, water, set, stone. So uh, why I chose this because it seems a starting point for me to connect visual arts. 
um, when I, I remember when I was still in the nursery school, the teachers were using the pictures for help us to memorize the word. And it was fun and interesting. We even found the toys, the objects that we found in school, or even our body to create works. So I reckon it's helpful for children to memorize the words and also develop the creativity in visual arts. Absolutely. I think like it's it's a very sensory experience as well for early years or, or young people, you know, using different texture, as you said, objects or elements of nature to really get the textures and the shapes of the words you are trying to see or, or the visuals you're trying to represent. So it's it's a very multi-sensory experience. Yes, that... exactly. And also it's very easy to found it at and do it at home so you can find different objects at home or even in the garden for example you can see everything Stone I just collect sticks. at the garden mm -hmm. so you can just make the op use the object and then make the words and then make more fun in at home to play it and how would you use bodies to do so yeah let's do it together now Yan human Yan Tai Big Die Seal Small Seal Dose, Cynthia, for sharing your culture and your practice with us, and Dose at home for watching us. I hope you enjoyed discovering wee corners of Hong Kong in Edinburgh and that you'll get practicing your pictograms at home. So again, and we normally say bye bye in Hong Kong. Bye bye. bye. bye.